guys, it's Madame Oreo. By the time you're seeing this, you will have found out all about my cosplays for Com Bravo 2018. And so I thought I'd do kind of a little behind the scenes prologue to that that would be posted after the fact because, of course, this cosplay is or was a surprise. So um, by now you know I went as Heartless Sora. And so I was essentially just a heartless, but I wanted to represent Sora in particular. So that's what I chose to do. And at this point, I may not have gone with this song choice for my performance, but I thought, okay, I've already edited the other song. So if I do end up going with this song choice, you guys will kind of see my process, my creative process in getting to this point. So. Um, before I get started, I want to talk about my options. So I have two options for performance. I am in the cosplay masquerade and I'm going to be dancing in my cosplay. Usually what I do is jazz. Um, so the style of dance I usually perform is jazz, even though people come up to me afterward and go, oh my god, you were the ballerina. It's yes. Yes, I was. I But it was actually jazz. Anyway, so little tidbit, but usually I do jazz. It's very upbeat. It's like fun, exciting. There's some acrobatics to it sometimes. Um, and it, it's more of like the fast paced, like club sort of music without the R&B element to it. So anyway, it's like fast paced techno, whatever you want to call it. Um, so my first option is to do jazz, but I specifically teach ballet and I am, I, I qualify myself, or I don't know if that's the right word, I basically categorize myself as a modern dancer. If somebody's to ask me like, what's your favorite? Well, that's it. So I'm very ballet influenced, which is very technical, but I also um, love the creativity that is modern technique because it's very free, it's very strange and different and like contemporary style. So anyway, this is for if I decide to do a ballet, contemporary ballet is what I'm calling it. This is going to be the opening to Kingdom Hearts, the original game, the original theme, opening, whatever. This is the original version, not the remastered version. Blah, 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 blah. Remastered version. Um, sorry, I'm tripping over like all of my words because I'm trying to make this as short of an intro as possible without being the typical me and rambling on for like seven minutes. So anyway, um, this is going to be the original version and I'm going to show you my process in cutting music, not just because I do this for conventions, but because I do this for my entire dance career, choreography, for the shows I put together, all the music is cut by me. And I think the most cuts I had in one song for my past performance in February of this year was 14 and I have a really good ear so that you will never hear any of them. I like pride myself like you are not going to hear my cuts. So um, that's kind of what I am showing you. So anyway, the first time I go through this, I'm going to talk about what my plan is and why do you cut music? Because I'm one person. My lungs and my body can only go full force for so long before I collapse and injure myself or whatever. So I can't dance for five minutes. Also, number one rule, always leave the audience wanting more. You don't want to dance for five minutes and everybody's like, is this over yet? Like, no. I try to keep my dances at conventions specifically about a minute and 30 seconds long, which is incredibly short sounding but like it gets the job done like you'll see what i can do in a minute and probably less than that but like a minute 30 is good um so yeah anyway if you've got like a group dance that has like 30 people in it people are going on and off stage you get breaks you're not out for the entire time usually so those are longer it showcases a lot of people and you're not like trying to breathe for five minutes straight doing intense cardio with like all these really hard movements so dance is a sport where you get into it and you're like oh my god why did i choose to do this this is so hard this is taking so much out of me but you have to make it look like it's the easiest thing in the world so that just takes time and practice okay so now that i've given you like this five minute long 
introduction to that, um, I'm going to get started with this process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my um, display behind me. I'm going to make myself smaller. Right now you're seeing a bunch of me. Anyway, and I'm just going to be kind of over this window, this corner, this like, oh, that way. There we go. This corner over here where I'm going to be, you, you won't need to see that because that's literally just where my media goes. Okay, so when we're to this screen, this is Sony Vegas Pro 12. This is the version of Sony Vegas I use to edit all of my videos, edit all of my music. It's very easy once you get the hang of it. It is a learning curve at first. If you're interested in getting started with making videos or editing music, I do recommend this software, but practice, 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 experiment because You'll lose things and go, how did I do this? Oh my God, this is the most frustrating thing ever. But then once you get the hang of it, it's like super, super straightforward. So, okay. So I'm going to start by going through the song. I'm going to turn the song down a little bit just so you can hear me. I'm going to kind of go by this. So at this point in time, I already have this bit choreographed. And obviously this is the intro, like, you're not going to do anything crazy, probably. So you keep this part in, this establishes, like, how the song's going to go. So usually when a song is low like this, like it just went down, it, it started and then it got soft. This is when you're doing like really concentrated things usually that take the most energy like, um, oh my gosh, endurance wise because this is the beginning of the song, you've got all your energy. This is where you're going to start to really feel it because this is a minute in, this is like a minute 15 in so it's like, okay I'm feeling this now. And this is where you gotta find, like, your lungs. This is the build, so this better build up to something big. You don't wanna, like, build up and then be like, Woo! I didn't do anything! Like, that's gotta be big. That has to be something that takes, like, a lot. And then you know, like, that's the peak, now we're going down. This is the part that I'm going to have to cut because I will die if I don't. But it's so beautiful. This is what makes the job so freaking hard. Because it's like, God, what part of this do I cut out? Literally, I'll probably cut right here and go straight to the end. I know that's like heartbreaking because this song is so pretty. But we're already at two minutes. We're over two minutes. So almost all of this has to go right here. This would be really good in a group because like those little twinkles that come in, you can see like a couple people going across, a couple people going across, bigger group, like this would be like what you would establish in your mind if you're going to like choreograph to this song. kind of where we're going. We've been here, we're kind of going down just a little, like, to kind of build up the ending. And then this would be up. This is like, if you were a group, this would be like everybody coming out. This better be good. This is your peak. Peak. Ending. This has to be strong. And now you can pant really hard and go into the ending because you're done. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> you gotta get that twinkle in the end. So that twinkle just can be something like, oh my god, thank god I did it. So, okay, so now you've heard the process behind the music. I know you're seeing like a million things right now. And I have this screen up, it's just because I'm monitoring things. But anyway, now you've heard um, kind of my process 
choreographically behind the music and what goes through my mind. Like I said, this whole beginning part right here that I'm highlighting, I've already choreographed that. And I can tell you right now, it's a lot of like muscle endurance work. Um, Cause you gotta get the audience's attention right off the bat. You can't be like, I did a pretty arm. Like the audience is gonna be like, I have to go to the bathroom. So you need to do something like right off the bat that is good. That's like eye catching. It's like, it's like anything you do, like writing a paper, your beginning sentence can't be like, I decided to write a paper about whatever, water, like, no, you need to have something better than that. So it's the same way in a dance. So that beginning part's established, that little section that I pointed out that got really, really quiet, um, that's probably going to be a lot of like balancing, um, long, slow, like difficult movement that looks like it's really easy, but it's not. Um, and then it's going to have to build up into that like main really long section that I said I'll probably do the beginning and then cut to the end. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. So I'm going to go back in the music. So this is this is the part that's like going to build up to that. And I also have to keep in mind the stage is not going to be super huge, so I'm not going to be able to like run and do anything crazy. I have to like do something kind of in place but that can read big. So And like you always want to follow the instruments that like what they're doing. Like if you hear cymbals like that, that's like cymbals are really loud and like big. So you want to do like something big and loud, like movement wise. Okay, so this is the part I'm going to have to listen to for cutting. Da, 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 na, na, na. So you also have to count the music right here, because you have to finish a phrase. You have to finish a count of eight. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that five right there that I just counted. Um, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two. Okay, so we're gonna have to cut out the like, and one. That's gonna go into something back here. Five, six, seven, eight, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, whoop, there we go. Um, snap that. Oh, hello. I don't want you to auto drag yet. Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This needs to go dun 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 dun. That's what needs to happen next. So, so this isn't gonna be in it, but da 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 da. That was it. So, with this program, it's nice because I can add another track and kind of test things like this, like overlap. Okay, hold on. So that was like not right. I'm gonna try it this way actually. <laughs> okay, so that's when. No, 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 no. Let's see if we can fade that. Nope, did it twice. Yes! Okay, so see how now that's a that's what I call a rough cut. That's not like the final cut necessarily because I, I have to listen to it loud and make sure like over big speaker that's not going to be like, and there was a cut there. Like, no, that's not, not allowed. So um, what I typically do is I back up and I'll listen to this build again. I'll go a little bit more forward than that. Um, I don't really have to go back this far, but I'm going to show you guys kind of how this builds into the ending. Because instead of building into that, like, you know, bridge or whatever you want to call it, um, you build into the ending. So instead of going, ah, uh, it goes, boom. 
So this is really the part I need to listen from, is like right here. So really at like 2.32, I'm done. So that's still a little, that's like a minute longer than what I would usually do, but for this kind of a song, it's almost impossible to go shorter because a minute 30 is right in the middle of your build from the beginning. You haven't really established the song yet. So this ending part gives you full range of that initial like phrase that we heard in the beginning in a builded like format. So. Um, now I gotta go back and I gotta listen to this cut in particular. It's really not too bad right now. I'm gonna try and make sure it counts correctly. See if I need to bring that back a little. And one thing I can do with this program is the fade types. Um, these are gonna be like probably kind of small on your screen, but like if I get a wave fade type into I'll point it out. Hold on. I gotta find it because it's like a children's Puzzle trying to find this sometimes So I don't want a straight-up curvy X like this. I want Where the heck is it? Oh my gosh, it's in here it's, this is seriously like a game. Okay, this is it. This one right here where it kind of like fades to the left a little. I'm gonna see if this sounds any smoother. Okay, hold on, something's weird. Aha! There we go. Okay, so you hear now how it really like just sounds like the same note. That's what I want, so I don't even need this second track. Sometimes I will fade one part up here and fade the next part in down here so I can do a manual fade as I want, but I don't really need to do that for this song, so that's kind of easier. Um, so now we're going to go back to about here. And we're just going to listen to it. Yay! So that's one cut. This song only needed one cut. If I really wanted to like, I mean, I could like break it apart more, but I just, I don't want to because it's really unnecessary. Like I can kind of establish my own movements with that. So, cause like this whole part at the beginning, I'm not going to cut off any shorter because we hear it later. So, um, yeah, that's basically what I do to cut music. Now, all cuts do not take the same amount of time. Like, and obviously when I'm explaining it, it takes a lot longer than if I'm just doing it on my own and just listening to it. I can do that like really fast. But, um, yeah, different cuts will 
take you different lengths of time. Sometimes you luck out and you get like the exact thing you want, like with one click, not even looking, like it's really weird how that happens. Um, but that is a potential candidate for my song. So because I haven't saved this yet, I should probably render this and um, I'm going to render in the highest quality stereo. There we go, perfect. Um, and I'll just call this Kingdom Hearts Valet. Just sure. Um, so then once that is rendered, it's saved. I can also save this file if I want. If I have like a ton of cuts, I will, because then I can go back. Um, but for one cut, I usually don't. It's okay, like no big deal. Um, so now the song is rendered. I can hear it just fluidly and really start choreographing to it. So that is that basically. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little behind the scenes um, tidbit on how I edit my music. And I'll be sure and try and get something um, posted myself. Or you maybe have already even seen that by now. I don't know, but because I'm speaking into the future. But also, I know Com Bravo last year with their masquerade, they recorded the entire thing. So you could literally go back and watch. But um, for me last year, I was very much like not prepared in the sense that I didn't know it wasn't just like, I didn't know what their masquerade was like. I didn't know if it was just like walk and pose and walk off. Like I didn't know if they had like a skit portion because they didn't have like any information online. So I got all my information when I got there. So then I found out like, oh, skits are just like part of it. So okay. I was like, well, I get to walk and pose music, which is way under what I would want to be doing right now. So I was like, I'm going all out next year. I'm gonna have it ready. Um, so anyway, yeah, you guys um, will, you guys now know a little bit more about my creative process. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you're interested in seeing more uh, videos like this, be sure to let me know because I definitely could do more like creative concept videos, um, especially centered around like dance and, you know, what I do every day of my life. So um, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching, for listening to all my like rambling and explanation uh, leading into this. I know I talk forever. Um, but anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all your support to everything I do as usual and to all my cosplays. I always get super kind messages about all my cosplays. And um, yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.
Hey guys, it's Madam. I am about to practice the ballet that I'm doing for the Com Bravo Cosplay Masquerade. This is before the second edit. You guys watched me edit this version that I'm dancing to now, but it's too long. It's too much, and so I'm going to take it down, but I'll show you guys what I've got so far. And um, some of this might cut out of frame because I'm just doing this selfie mode, but uh, just know that I'm dancing. And if I stop, it's because there's either a cut or I don't like what I just did. So this is kind of my continuation of my creative process. So I'm gonna get the music started. So this is very tiring. <laughs> um, the ending I messed up and so it didn't look that impressive. I was like, um, I need to do that again. But um, there will be, oh my God, my lungs, two more cuts. So I'm gonna cut out the little part before I balanced on my elbows um, and that's really I'm not cutting it so blatant right there but um, that's the idea that's how long I'm gonna hold the elbow stand for and then the ending you can see me rolling around on the floor and it looks really strange right now because um, I haven't worked out that last cut so uh, once I do you guys will see the finished product and it won't look like that. So <laughs> it won't have a weird like holding crap. So I'm actually gonna film just the ending because I'm gonna have to watch this later and be like, what am I supposed to be doing there? So I'm gonna do that now. So this is the elbow stand section.
So I still messed up a little part, but it was better because again, that cut's gonna be there. So I'm probably gonna change the part going into the ending anyway. That was my walk off. I'm done. I'm, I'm gonna do this again later, probably next week. Hey guys, it's been almost a week since I filmed my last video in the studio rehearsing my dance. And since then, actually today, before I came to work, I um, recut the music. So now it is about 40 seconds shorter, which is a lifesaver. Oh my God, I was about to die. So that's um, what I'm about to try. I haven't even tried it yet. I just finished teaching. I've been teaching for about, um, three hours and 15 minutes just about so um yeah so i'm nice and warmed up at least last week when i recorded my videos i was super like my body felt super heavy it was like the fourth day in a row i danced really really hard and i think i just needed a break and i was getting really frustrated so i'm hoping things go better tonight because this is the last rehearsal i'm planning to have before com bravo so fingers crossed i'm gonna get started okay so i just marked through the whole thing kind of figured everything out with the new cut. And then I did the beginning intending to the, the entire thing and I completely messed up and got mad. So I was like, no, I'm starting over. But I decided I'm gonna record it this time because I'm afraid I'm gonna get too tired if I keep doing it over and over again. And then it's gonna look worse and worse. So I don't want it to look bad. I'm trying to make it look good. I'm trying to perform it. It's really hard when it's the end of the night, but like, it's also really hard when it's literally the only thing you're doing um, without like having a warm up class to practice. So I'm gonna film it this time and I'm gonna let you guys in on a fun little secret uh, from the life of a performer. The moment when I'm prepared, like you see me hit my beginning pose, as we call it, like before the music starts, that is the scariest moment ever, like for a dancer. And it's the best moment ever. Like that moment right there before you start, there's, there really aren't any words to describe that feeling and that moment of like waiting, like anticipation of like, okay, this is it. So just know, that's what's going through my head um, when I am getting ready to start. You know, no one will know that in the audience, but you guys behind the scenes will know that from me just explaining it in this video. And you'll see it in here. I mean, obviously this is like rehearsal, but no, at the performance, that's when there are literally no words to describe that moment. So I'm gonna um, get the music started and get going. This was the other song I almost danced to, by the way.
Okay. Okay, that felt a lot better. <clears throat> Okay guys, I just ran the dance for the last time. I've only done it one more time since you saw it and I was gonna show this one to you but I'm not gonna worry about it because the last one was really good and this one was more for my brain because I wanted to try it with my hair down since I'm wearing a wig that is down. It's pretty heavy and it's got a lot going on so I'm like, huh, I should probably do this like once with my hair down but I also started to get really tired and so I was like, you know what? Last time was like really good. I feel really good about it. You gotta do it one more time just for you to be like, get all the kinks out before stage time. So that's what I did. And I feel really good about the time before. So this was just one of those like, okay, last call, anything else I need to fix? Um, I needed something um, alternate at the, not the very end, but like after I turn and go to the ground just because I don't know what the stage is gonna be like. So I tried something else right there just to have it in my body for if I need to pull that out for any reason. And yeah, but anyway, that's it. Next time you see this, I'll be on stage and I'll be performing it. And you'll know if I mess up, because you'll be like, ah, that's not what she did in the room. But whatever, I'm, I love performing. It's what I do, what I love more than anything else, so. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes kind of like creative process. I know it's been long and it's, you know, I applaud you if you made it all the way through and watched all of it because it's, uh, some people it's totally their thing and other people they're like, I don't get any of this, I don't care. So um, if you're a creative brain like I am, then you're awesome. <laughs> but if you're not, it's fine. Like everybody has their things. So. I, I love you guys so much. Thank you for all your support. Um, it really means the world to me. All the support you've given me for my videos, my cosplay, my dancing, everything that I love. Gaming, uh, this game in particular, that took me, you know, 15 years to finally play after getting it for Christmas. Um, <laughs> that's, you know, life happens. But anyway, um, I really hope you've enjoyed this. I feel really good. I'm really excited. I'm nervous. I'm hoping all goes well. I'm looking forward to Comp Bravo. Hopefully I will have met several of you there and I'm very excited. So I love all of you guys. Air kiss because my hands were all over the ground and that's gross. But yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video, my next stream, whatever I end up doing. Thank you for your patience. This is probably going to be one of the first things up since my move, which was at the beginning of last month by the time you're seeing this. Um, so yeah, here we are. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Madame Wario. Peace out, pimps.
who helped save me by helping me edit my music in the hotel room after I cried for about 20 minutes. Devastated that I can't do this whole thing. So, after I do the elbow skin, I'm going to stop. And that's going to be it. Um, I asked my good friends, Pixel, Snack Attack, okay, Snumbo, um, my bow, Odin's back, asked all of them to do my best. And that's the way they like what's the gift. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm really nervous because I'm kind of having to do it on stage, changing a couple of counts. So, in case you're wondering what's going through my brain, that's what's going through my brain is like, oh, the ending is now the elbow stand, and that's the thing I'm most nervous about. I don't want to fall, I don't want to screw up the ending. Um, but yeah, I'm super nervous. That's it. I'm really excited at the same time. Um, I'm number 15, so I'm right in the middle. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I'm looking forward to performing for you guys. Thank you so much for all um, But yeah, it's, it's been quite a curveball of a day. But as a performer, you, you gotta adapt and that's it. It might not go like you want. It drives me crazy, but that's how it is. So. And remember that, that silence is a monkey on stage, and my heart is like, mm -hmm. But I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the shadow part of it. Entry number 15 in the journeyman division, Shadow Heartless Sora. Sora has become a Shadow Heartless, but still must fulfill his destiny by finding his heart again. Okay, so I'm going to start by going through the song. I'm going to turn the song down a little bit, just so you can hear me. I'm going to kind of go by this. And obviously this is the intro, like, you're not going to do anything crazy, probably. So usually when a song is low like this, like it just went down, it, it started and then it got soft. This is when you're doing like really concentrated things usually that take the most energy like um oh my gosh endurance wise because this is the beginning of the song you've got all your energy this is where you're gonna start to really feel it this is the build so this better build up to something big you don't want to like build up and then be like "Woo, i didn't do anything like that's got to be big that has to be something that takes like a lot and then you know like that's the peak now we're going down this is the part that I'm gonna have to cut because I will die if I don't. This is kind of where we're going. We've been here, we're kind of going down just a little, like, to kind of build up the ending. And then this would be up, 
This is like, if you were a group, this would be like everybody coming out. This better be good. This is your peak. Peak ending. This has to be strong. And now you can pant really hard and go into the ending because you're done. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> you gotta get that twinkle in the end. Hey guys, it's Madame Wario. It is about two weeks after Con Bravo 2018 has actually commenced. I am now home. My vacation is over. I am sad. <laughs> and I am going to talk to you about the final, not really step, but the final part of this whole creative process um, and this entire video as well, um, which covers not only the results, but my uh, final thoughts on the event and my thank yous. That really should be step four, is just thanking every single person who has supported me in this journey. Um, including my dance studio for allowing me after hour time to rehearse and to come into the studio just, you know, for free um, to work on this piece. And my biggest thank you has to go to every single one of my friends. I love you guys so much. Having you in the audience screaming your heads off probably was my highlight um, from the entire masquerade process. Like, there's nothing that compares to knowing that your friends or people you love are in the audience watching you or supporting you on the sidelines. Like, that is the best feeling in the world. There's nothing that can replace that. And I love every single one of you for it. Um, I'm gonna try and name all of you and not forget anybody. So, first of all, a huge thank you to my beau, Odin Spack, um, because you had to console me when I was, like, bawling and going insane because I was going through a loop and I was being dramatic, and thank you for that! Um, <laughs> thank you to... Um, Pixel Bloom, who helped me edit my music at the last second for the second year in a row. I'm sorry, I promise next year, I can't promise, but I really hope next year I won't have to, like, say, oh my god, did you bring your laptop? Something went wrong. Again, I, but thank you so much. I love you. Um, Snack Attack 8 for coming to the room and helping me, um, calm down in that moment of annoyance with, um, just getting ready, and for providing feedback on which part of my dance I was able to do. Because I could only do one half. I don't know if that was clear before, but like I only had time to really do like first half or second half of the dance. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, little Foo68, for bringing me carrots. She got stuck in a restaurant during the performance, so she missed it, and I know she was really upset, but I love you. Thank you for your support. Regardless, I know you would have been there if you had not been in a weird restaurant situation. Huge shout out to my um, dance mom, Cholsey91, <laughs> who I, I just love you and everything about you. Um, to K Man Rules, aka Carmomatic, um, for all your support and screaming, as well as, um, oh my gosh, I, I'm like, I know people's names and I'm already messing up usernames in my mind, so. Uh, shout out to. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Billy, aka what the heck is your is your username different on here than on Twitter? Oh my God, what is it? Will, Will, you know who you are. I, I love you. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Monkey Manor, aka Business Kong, and Kelly. Um, oh my gosh, shots. Even though you interrupted the video, I still love you. <laughs> Even though um, Odin may not, he may hate you now. Anyway, um, <laughs> who else? Um, Other Kyle, I don't even know that you have a username, but Other Kyle, you were there. You're awesome, and thank you. Uh, shout out to, I don't know if you were here or not, Troll. I think you were there. Troll, what's up? Um, and, oh my god, am I forgetting anybody. If I forget anybody, I'm gonna feel so terrible. I'll give a shout out to Chris, aka Little Foosbo. Wasn't there, but totally was part of the whole, whole shebang. Who am I forgetting? Am I seriously forgetting anybody? Okay, I really hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but number one thing, I want to thank you guys because you're my favorite, and I love you, and I would not go to conventions without you. Like, if that were just a thing where I was going alone, I'd be like, I'm sure I'd have fun, but 
I wouldn't know what I was missing because you guys are freaking incredible and you're such weird and amazing people. I love you. Anyway, if I forgot anybody, I'm seriously the worst, but um, I'm admitting that, so hopefully that makes up for something. Uh, but anyway, okay, I just rambled on for like a million years and I didn't even tell you about my results. So Com Bravo does their award ceremony the next day, which is really convenient because um, it's one thing to stew and wait for people to make decisions right after you perform. That's another whole, it's another realm of nerve-wracking. So I'm really happy that they have their own award ceremony the next morning. Um, so I want to just let you guys know I did walk away with an award and I was very determined to walk away with an award even more so after I had to like redo things at the actual convention. So I was like, I don't walk away with something, I'm gonna go crazy because this was a process. Um, and itself, just being here and having to re-edit everything, but yes, I walked away with the Best Routine Award, as you can see there, um, which is different from the award I walked away with last year. Last year I actually won my first Craftsmanship Award, or Craftsmanship Award, um, for my N64 cosplay. And now I have a skit award from Comp Bravo, so I got another fancy little ribbon again this year. I love these because they say Comp Bravo Masquerade and they're all official and professional and I really think that's cool. Also, if you can't make the award ceremony, it's pretty awesome because they will mail you um, your award. Of course I was there, but if you can only like make it to one day of the convention or something, that's something that is very convenient on their part. So I was very happy to walk away with an award. I had posted that on Twitter, uh, they had posted that on Twitter. And now, in some cases, I'm bumped up from the journeyman division to artisan or master. It just depends on the convention and their rule set for their masquerade. So that means I have to get better. It's more of a challenge, and I'm willing to challenge myself. And I want to really work on craftsmanship. Because um, obviously dancing is something I've done my entire life. So like, that I'm, I'm working on every day, but it, there's a lot more behind it than uh, other styles of craftsmanship. But that basically wraps this up. I just wanted to tag something onto the end of this um, that is in real time that kind of goes over my thoughts. And my thoughts are honestly, um, they are pretty critical just because there was a, an hour and a half, there were 90 minutes for the Cosplay Masquerade. They only took 45, so the whole like one minute limit thing really just set me off and I was very disappointed in that. I think originally they thought they were only going to have uh, like an hour for their time slot because Com Bravo was kind of lucky that it happened at all this year. They had management like quit and change like months before the convention. So I mean, a lot of things were really disorganized this year, but, and in a way it was understandable, but in a, another way it was like, no one had said anything like super upfront about it, so it just made it seem like uh, they weren't trying as hard as last year, but I know they probably were trying harder, but it just made things like that really frustrating. Like, um, so really the, the fault is in a lot of different places um, and just communication. My biggest beef overall is that there isn't any information out there on the website and if there is you have to hunt for it like I did not see this limitation of time anywhere obviously somebody else did because if I hadn't overheard the girl next to me saying like oh is that a real thing I would have been like what well, I would have had no idea my music would have just cut off I would have kept going because that's what dancers do if your music stops you don't so they would have been literally pushing me off the stage and I would have been so angry so I was very lucky that I heard um, the person next to me say that, but it must have been on a forum somewhere or Facebook, somewhere I did not look, somewhere I did not check. It was not on the website. Even the information just about the 30 person limit that I had talked about, or I don't even know if I talked about that. There was a 30 person limit at the masquerade, so I was really like, oh my god, am I going to get in it? Um, freaking out. Um, but my friend Pixel actually sent me something about that and I don't even know where he found it I don't know where it was posted again wasn't on the website so they don't do um, pre-registration for the masquerade like other conventions probably because I would assume it's because they have in the past and a lot of people haven't shown up and then 
you know, that takes away from other people trying to enter, which, okay, but you should at least have, like, a check-in process. They were just, like, it's flawed, it's a flawed system, and that's my biggest complaint. Um, because, and the thing is, if you have a 30-person limit, and you have a 60-minute time frame, you could at least do a minute 30, or on, a, like, two minutes in total per act, like, including the announcement and everything, so... I, it was just frustrating. It was just um, disheartening at the last second to have to change something frantically like that. But uh, you know what? The show must go on. Not everything's going to be perfect. Not everything's going to go the way you plan. And that's just part of show business and part of life. So um, I got through it. It was fun regardless. And light at the end of the tunnel, I am definitely planning on performing um, this full piece, the completed piece, at Anime Crossroads, my home convention in 2019. So that way I can get the whole thing on stage and have done it in the frantically edited way and the practiced and primped way that I had planned. So um, that is something that I'm definitely planning for next year for Anime Crossroads and I'm very excited about that. So it's not all the end of the world. It's not like, oh my gosh, no one's ever going to see that. I'm never going to get to do it in costume on stage. Like, I will. I will I will do it some way, somehow, and it'll be awesome. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was really more of a mini movie, because I know it's um, probably at least an hour, um, just with all the editing, but I really wanted to show off every bit of the creative process, because it is very repetitive and time-consuming, and you have to go back and do the same thing over and over again. And I wanted to be an example of that in this video, which is why I showed the dance so many times, and getting from point A to point B, or like starting out and being kind of fuzzy with choreography and like all over the place, and then the end result. I didn't want you guys to just see the end result. The point of this video was to see how I got to the end result, and um, I hope that you enjoyed that or found it interesting. And if you guys have any questions, um, and you're interested in entering a cosplay masquerade, it's a really fun way to get involved at conventions. It's um, something to be directly involved in a specific panel and to perform and have fun and be creative. Um, I, the, honestly, everybody should enter a masquerade at least once if you do any form of cosplay because it is so much fun. Um, and whether you're a dancer, a singer, actor, comedian, like there's so many things you can do at a masquerade. Um, but yeah, just have fun. Honestly, it's so much fun preparing for something like this and performing in a masquerade. So thank you guys so much for watching this, all your support. This is the first video I've actually filmed in my new apartment. Um, and so that's exciting. I have more videos to come from my new apartment, including a, an apartment tour. Uh, but that's not ready yet because I'm still finishing my recording space. Somehow it's the last space to get finished. I didn't do that intentionally. It really should have been like one of the first, but being me, I'm like, no, it has to be perfect. I have to work on it forever. So anyway, uh, but thank you so much for watching this and listening to me ramble on, watching me dance a million times, probably more than you wanted to. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I love you guys so much. Thank you for um, all of your support and feedback and amazing comments and everybody I met at Con Bravo as well. I love all of you. Thank you so much for um, coming up and saying hi and just uh, being awesome people. So I have a couple more Con Bravo videos I'm making as well, so keep an eye out for those and I will see you guys in my next video. This has been Madame Wario, and peace out pimps!